This is quite a special one because we've got access here to the new custom line Nevetta 30. This very boat is only three weeks old. It's hull number four. There's a quick look at the stats. And this really is something quite special. We've got full access, so we're gonna go through absolutely everything. And we're gonna start, obviously, back here with this amazing platform and the toy chest. So as you can see, this lifts up here to give access to the tender, which comes out through this platform here, will fold down and then it flips out and it comes down on a roller. And there's a winch in there, which pulls the jet ski out as well. We'll have a closer look at that from the engine room, but it means that all the toys are nicely tucked away in the tender garage there. Of course, you step up via the passerelle and then you're into the main cockpit. There's a lot of outdoor living space on this boat. And this is a really nice, shaded, comfortable area. You know, big overhang from the, from the flybridge above and then really comfortable sofa here. And then you walk through here into what is the main saloon. And you're going to have to forgive me, there are other people on this boat because we're at a boat show, but hopefully that won't disturb too much. And we'll carry on straight through and head to the main event on the main deck, which is the master cabin, which is up here, forward, away from guests. It's very quiet, it's very private, and it is immaculately finished. There's a walk-in wardrobe there. It's actually got mirrored doors that slide together and then a magnet holds them together in the middle. The proper walk-in wardrobe here. And then you get these massive hull windows on either side. Absolutely enormous. And the feeling of space in here is absolutely incredible. Really, really good headroom throughout, of course. This actually has a mural in it at the moment, but that is the television mounted at the end of the bed and a big bed that you can walk all the way around, totally flat floor. It truly is opulent, this cabin. And then right forward is where you find the bathroom. Which has got twin sinks. Behind that smoke screen there is where you find the toilet. And then the opposite side, you have the shower, which has got a rain shower head set in the ceiling there. So if we head back out of the master cabin, you have a day heads here. So guests have really good access to this throughout the day and they can pop in from the, the decks and, and find the toilet really easily. Behind here you have all of the AV and audio equipment for the, for the main deck here, sort of technical cupboard bit more storage here. There is storage all over this boat. It really is designed to be used, lived aboard, travelled long distances, and that's reflected in how practical it is and how much storage it is. It's beautifully made and finished, but it's also designed to be used. So we head down the stairway, and then the guest cabins mirror each other. So you have two doubles, identical, one to port, one to starboard, with an ensuite bathroom. Really good storage again. You've got a cupboard as you walk in, a wardrobe I should say, right by the door. Television of course. A double wardrobe here. And then a bathroom. Again they've employed sliding doors to make the most of the space. Behind the smoked screen is where you find the toilet. And then on the opposite side, again with a rain shower head in the ceiling, you have the shower cubicle. Then moving forward, you have twin guest cabins, ensuite again. This one actually has a Pullman berth, so that will drop down and create another bunk if you want to sleep three people in here. But as standard, you have these two single berths, ensuite bathroom, The proportions of the living spaces are so generous. Nowhere feels pinched. Everywhere feels really comfortable and each cabin has space to breathe. This is the other twin. As an option, you can have a mechanism where the two berths slide together to create a double. This boat doesn't have it, but you can have that if you want to be able to 
create a double bed in either of these cabins. And this is this cabin's ensuite. Really fabulous accommodation. Again, storage is plentiful. And then just a final look at the other double cabin on the other side of the boat. Identical to the first one, pretty much, with the ensuite. It works really nicely. So, we'll head back upstairs. And we'll have a proper look at this main saloon. Now, the clue is in the name Custom Line. You really can do what you want with this layout. Pick the furniture, pick the materials. This is what they'd call the standard layout. So you have this dining table here and this collapses. So these panels slide in to make the table a bit smaller if you want to. You have sliding doors on either side as well. So these slide open to give access to the side decks. Have those on both sides. And then just this really lovely seating area, which makes the very most of these absolutely enormous windows. It's a really, really impressive space and obviously connects really nicely to the main cockpit. As I said, sliding doors on this side, simple sliding mechanism, and then you're out onto the side deck. Now down there is the crew quarters. Obviously there's people in there at the moment, so we'll have a look at those later. So for now, we'll head up this flight of stairs, which is central and forward on the main deck which takes us to this Sky Lounge. And this is a lovely area because you're a bit more elevated. As you can see, we're at the level of the middle decks on the boats around us. But this has a bit of elevation. It's really nicely finished. Television pops up from that central space there. So you have a big TV here so you can sit on the sofas and watch television or just gaze out at the view through these enormous windows. If we go forward from here, you're at the bridge. And it's really impressive. It feels really business-like, purposeful. These enormous Simrad screens. You have four upright. And you have these ones set in the dash. So this is all of the boat's systems here. But all of these screens can show whatever you want. You've got radar here and you've got the chart here. This one's showing all the boat's cameras, which you can flick between and boat management down here. Here you have the control for the bow and stern thrusters. There's your throttles. MAN V12, 1,200 horsepower engines. We'll have a look at those down in the engine room. Steering wheel, and then just a leaning post here. But you have got a seat here, so if you're on longer passengers, then you can sit back and, and, and watch from there with a great view over the bow. Quite a far forward in this helm, so you do have a, a pretty fabulous view forward. And then for the crew, there's direct access out to the decks here. And we'll sweep around the decks later on. And another side door out that side. And then what's lovely about this deck is the way it merges so seamlessly with this aft deck here, this raised aft deck. And this is a really cool feature, the automatic opening doors. You just approach and they open automatically. Really good for a crew as well. If they're carrying plates and glasses, then they just open for them. So it's a practical thing but it's also a very cool touch too. And then you have this lovely deck, which will be such a nice dining area in this raised position. A big dining table here, plenty of shelter from the overhang from the sun deck. And obviously you've got this seating here. It just feels very spacious. It hasn't been overfitted with furniture. So there is sort of room to breathe on the deck spaces. It just feels very, very luxurious. You have this magnificent carbon fibre spiral staircase as well. Craftsmanship is absolutely stunning with this nice stainless steel banister that runs around the outside. Nice deep treads. And this is where the sun worshippers will be up here on the sun deck. No helm position up here. This is purely for relaxation and enjoyment. So you have this central radar mast which has got the sat domes on it and the radar. And this side you have a barbecue grill some storage down here and just look at these hinges. I mean, these are not heavy doors, they're, they're teak doors, but look how substantial these hinges are. 
the craftsmanship, the quality of this thing really is through the roof. A couple of sunbeds here. And then a pretty magnificent view down this bow onto the forward end of the main deck. Inside this teak unit, you have your fridge. Fridge drawer in there. And there's an ice maker on the other side as well. So you're pretty well set just to be up here and enjoy life in the sun on these low slung, very comfortable sunbeds. So then if we head back down that spiral staircase, and we'll go down the port side deck, you have unbroken access all the way forward to the forward end of this upper deck. This is the side door that leads into the wheelhouse, into the bridge. And on both sides, you have these wing stations. So here the skipper has control of the throttles for the stabilizers, got RPM, rudder position here, so that they can hang out this side and they can see you know, the proximity of the boat to the quay side. They can see how close they are at the stern, if they're going in stern two, just gives you a really good position in which to do close quarter maneuvering. Out of way there. And then you have this other really lovely socializing area. Again, it hasn't been packed with furniture, so it feels very spacious, but you have this really nice sofa here, some relaxed sort of freestanding seating, and then a central passageway that leads down to the anchor winches, the cleats forward here, all tucked away in this little forward well. And on the starboard side, the staircase leads back down onto the main deck on this side. So it isn't unbroken all the way around. You do change levels to get back down the starboard side, and then you're heading back towards the cockpit. And then from there, as we're back on the main deck, just to try and give you the orientation of the boat, we'll head for the crew quarters. So back through the main saloon, there's that central passageway I mentioned that goes up to the Sky Lounge. And then you're here in the, in the galley in the crew mess. So this is the crew's living quarters, but it's also the galley. So crew can easily serve all areas of the boat and they can get out onto the side deck from here through this side door. So you have easy access out to the deck areas. You've got full domestic refrigeration, got Miele cooking, oven, induction hob, twin sinks, lots and lots of storage, and this huge Simrad screen where from here the crew still have visibility of the entire boat. So you've got everything from the, the charts and the navigation, radar is all on this screen here. So they have everything at their fingertips. Then you have the Naviop system, which is all of the boat systems. This is showing all the tank levels, but you have everything here, electricity, the domestic supply, alarms, pumps, navigation. It's all here in this one screen so that the, the crew can see it all. Really easy to, to get to quickly and, and check that everything's okay. And here you have your tank levels with a maximum fuel tank level of 14,300 liters. It's got some quite serious range. If we drop down here, you're into the actual crew accommodation. So one cabin here. The actually two other cabins are actually occupied, so we won't go in there, but you have two more cabins down in that crew space. And then if we come out of this side door by the crew space, on the same deck, past the sliding doors that we mentioned earlier, you have access to the engine room. So down this run of steps, you first come into a sort of utility space. There's access from here to the garage, so you can, if the hatch is shut at the back, get to the garage from here and here you can see that winch I mentioned earlier. You can hook that winch onto the jet ski, pull it across onto the racks and then they slide out on this mechanism here. A Williams 435, 
You've got your sea do jet ski over that side. You've got a sea bob mounted up on the wall there. All nicely housed in the garage. And then if you head this way to another watertight door, you have the engine room proper. It's going to be a bit noisy in here, but I hope you can still hear me. The two MAN V12s, 1,200 horsepower. The boat's cruising speed is 10 knots. That should give a range of just over 1,000 nautical miles. Top speed is 14 knots. So it's a sort of laid back cruising, but it can go really long distances. That's the point of this boat. It's not a speed machine, it's a laid back cruiser. And the fit out and the equipment levels make it clear that this is a boat to be using to go long distances. So you have sewage treatment over this side, a Hamman system here, which is sewage treatment. You have fuel switch over, so you have the storage tanks, and then you have day tanks, and you can divert the fuel through those tanks as you wish. Twin generators. It's a really, really good space. If you had to do any work down here, there's plenty of room, and, and it's easy to access everything. I see you've got the wandering light here, so you can closely inspect things, pull that around the engine room to have a closer look at things. And then even down here you have a, a little workbench, a workshop even, with another watertight door, a storage area, and that's where the shore power coils into, automatically coils back into that drum there. It really is very, very well thought out. Very practical, a very high-end machine, which uses beautiful materials. It's very nice to look at, but it's also a proper cruising machine. And we head back up these steps. And we're back onto the main deck. And that's everything. So that's the custom line in the Vessa 30. I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you did, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.